Hello class, welcome to the next segment in the first lecture. And in this segment, we're just going to be taking a look at an exercise that you guys can uh, sort of participate in to sort of check your understanding on some of the stuff that we've talked about so far. So here, I have a small little problem that's shown up on the screen here. Suppose a temperature field in Fahrenheit is given by the equation below, and then there's a lovely equation. Temperature as a function of x and y is equal to 80 plus 0.19x plus 0.036y, or sorry, 0.36y. And uh, the question is, or the problem is, calculate the angle of the temperature gradient vector. So with that, I will encourage you to go ahead and pause the video and take five to 10 minutes and attempt to solve this problem on your own. And if you're either stuck or once you get a solution that you're comfortable with, then you can go ahead and resume the video and then I'll show the solution to you and explain how exactly to arrive at it. So with that, I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video. And uh, hopefully you've got an answer and hopefully the answer is correct. But now we're gonna take a look at how to work through it and how to arrive at the correct answer. So if we're going to calculate the gradient vector, keeping in mind what the definition of the gradient vector is, we first need to calculate the derivative of our scalar with respect to x, calculate how our scalar field changes in the x direction, and also calculate how it varies in the y direction, and calculate partial t, partial y, partial t, partial x, using the function that we were given. We could calculate partial t, partial z, but in this case, we'll see that it actually is not important. So. That's what we need to do first. So first we calculate our partial derivative with respect to x, uh, our partial derivative of our function, partial derivative of our function with respect to x. So that's what we do here. And since this term right here does not depend on x, then that just goes away. That's just zero. And then the derivative of derivative of this term, that is just 0 0.09 by using the power rule. And since this term also does not depend on x, then that term actually goes to zero since we're only interested in the terms that have x in them. That's what the partial with respect to x is. We're holding all the other, all the other variables are constant. We're only concerned about x. And if you work out that partial derivative, you should get uh, just a single number as a result, 0.19. And then next you calculate the derivative with respect to y, the partial derivative with respect to y. And evaluating that, again, this has no y in it, so that is just zero. This has no y in it, so that's also zero. And then simply apply the power rule to this term. And if you apply that power rule, you should get just a single number result again, which is 0.36. And then we could also calculate the derivative with respect to z. So if we do that, we find that none of these terms have a z in them. So that's just zero, that's just zero, that's just zero. So partial t with respect to z, or the z component of our gradient vector is in fact zero. And that would be the resulting gradient vector that we have, just keeping in mind what the definition of gradient is. So again, partial derivative with respect to x is look at, is uh, the x component, and that's 0.19. Partial with respect to y, the partial derivative of our function with respect to y, that's our y component, which is 0.36 here. And then finally, our z component is just zero, so we can just completely disregard that. It's gone, don't need to worry about it. So now we have a vector here that we can actually work with. And if we wanted to sort of draw out this vector uh, using the individual components, so 0.19 in the x direction, you might represent like that, and then 0.36 in the y direction. And if we draw the resultant of that vector, we would get something that looks like this. And then that's traced out by this angle theta, and this angle theta is what we're really after. And if we want to, we can use some trigonometry to resolve this angle theta. And the most sensible trigonometric function to use would be tangent, since we have an opposite component and an adjacent component here. So that means the tangent of our angle is equal to our opposite component, which is 0.36, over our adjacent component, which is 0.19, which is represented by here. And then if we take the inverse tangent of both sides, we can then resolve what our angle is. So our angle theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 0.36 divided by 0.19, and if you plug that into a calculator, you should get an answer of roughly 62.2 degrees or roughly pi over three radians. So hopefully you got that answer and hopefully the solution makes sense to you. Uh, in the next segment, we'll take a look at uh, reference frames and how uh, we can relate those to meteorology. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.